Native American Indian chiefs were put in unwinnable circumstances in the mid to late 1800s in the western U.S. The onslaught of western expansion by white inhabitants was squeezing out the land and livelihood of the final remnants of western Native American tribes of the Great Plains. The free-roaming bison, which were so necessary to the culture of the western tribes, were being hunted to extinction, and the ancestral lands were being taken from the tribes at alarming rates. Following are the stories of two of the great Native American leaders who fought and negotiated for their people. Sitting Bull was born into the Hunk Papa Band of Sioux Indians in the Dakota Territory in 1831 and given the name Jumping Badger at birth. It is believed by descendants that he was born along the Yellowstone River south of present-day Miles City, Montana. At age 14, he accompanied a party of Lakota warriors against a group of Crow warriors to take horses. He earned the respect of his fellow warriors when he rode forward to confront and kill a Crow enemy. Upon returning to camp, his father gave him his name, Sitting Bull. Thereafter, the father was known as Jumping Bull. Sitting Bull became an accomplished leader at a young age and led war parties during his youth. The so-called Red Cloud War took place from 1866 to 1868 as Red Cloud, the chief of the Oglala Lakota, started attacking forts in the Powder River country of Montana to keep control of that region. In support of Red Cloud, Sitting Bull led many war parties against Fort Burt Hole, Fort Stevenson, and Fort Buford in the area. The U.S. government agreed to abandon Fort Kearney and Fort C.F. Smith in order to facilitate a peace agreement with Red Cloud. A treaty known as the Treaty of Fort Laramie was signed in 1868 by Red Cloud and other leaders, but not by Sitting Bull. Sitting Bull continued his battles with the U.S. government through the years that followed, leading up to the most famous battle of the times, the Battle of the Little Bighorn. Many Sioux and Cheyenne had refused to move on to the reservations as ordered by President Grant. These bands were designated as hostiles by the government, and many started aligning with each other to form a large contingent of Indian warriors. Many bands formed a large encampment of over 10,000 Indians along the Little Bighorn River. General George Custer located and attacked the Indian encampment on June 25, 1876. The Native Americans routed Custer's 7th Cavalry, killing Custer and most of his troops. The victory celebration for Setting Bull and his followers was short-lived. The U.S. government assigned thousands more troops to quell the uprisings, and many Indians were forced onto the reservations. Sitting Bull refused to surrender and went into exile in Canada for four years before returning to the U.S. to surrender. Hunger and desperation finally led to his downfall, and on July 19, 1881, his small band of 186 Sioux people were sent to the Standing Rock Agency on the North and South Dakota border. In 1885, he was allowed to leave the reservation to appear for four months in Buffalo Bill Cody's Wild West show. In 1890, there was fear among the reservation agency leaders that Sitting Bull was poised to flee the reservation and cause trouble. The agency leaders sent 39 police officers to arrest him on December 15, 1890. A skirmish broke out between the agency police 
and those loyal to Sitting Bull. He was shot and killed during the skirmish, along with six officers and seven supporters of the chief. Thus ended the life of the legendary chief, medicine man, and revered leader of the Sioux Nation. Crazy Horse is a famous leader of the Oglala Band of Lakota Sioux during the Plains Indian Wars of the 1800s. There is disagreement among historians with respect to his date of birth, but most agree he was born between 1840 and 1845, with 1842 being the most likely. Crazy Horse was known to have a quirky personality and was characterized as aloof, shy, and modest, which made him somewhat of a strange individual. Although he was somewhat odd to his tribe members, he was well-liked and showed leadership qualities early on. His reputation as a warrior grew during the late 1850s and early 1860s. He fought in numerous battles with traditional enemies, the Crow, Shoshone, Pawnee, and Blackfeet. In 1865, he distinguished himself in the Battle of Platte Bridge and the Battle of Red Buttes, and was rewarded with the title of war leader by his tribe, for his bravery against U.S. Army troops. He fought bravely in 1866 in what was to become known as the Fetterman Massacre, in which Captain William Fetterman and 80 other U.S. troops were killed by a force of 1,000 Sioux and Cheyenne warriors. It was the Army's worst defeat on the Great Plains up to that point in time. On June 7, 1876, Crazy Horse led a contingent of over 1,500 Lakota and Cheyenne against General George Crook's force of 1,000 cavalry and infantry. Although not substantial in the number of casualties, the Battle of the Rosebud delayed Crook's joining with Custer's 7th Cavalry and was a major contributing factor in Custer's subsequent defeat at the Battle of the Little Bighorn. A week later, Crazy Horse played an important role in the defeat of Custer at the Little Bighorn. Two Indian eyewitnesses confirmed to historians years later that Crazy Horse was one of the bravest and most effective leaders among the warriors in the epic battle. On January 8, 1877, he fought his last battle at Wolf Mountain in Montana. His people suffered through that winter, and to protect them, he decided to surrender with his band at Fort Robinson in Nebraska. Crazy Horse was placed at the Red Cloud Agency located near Fort Robinson. There was significant tension between Crazy Horse and Chief Red Cloud and Chief Spotted Tail, who were previously located to the Red Cloud Reservation. Lots of misinformation was spread about Crazy Horse's intention to cause trouble for the Army. He was ordered arrested, and on the morning of his arrest, September 5, 1877, he resisted and was killed by a bayonet of one of the Army guards. His elderly parents put the body on a burial scaffold, but later took the remains to an undisclosed location near Wounded Knee, South Dakota. No one knows for sure where the body is interred. There is only one purported photo of Crazy Horse. Most historians doubt the authenticity of the photo, as Crazy Horse had indicated during his life that he did not want to be photographed. Also, studies of the tintype photo have mostly concluded that it is not authentic. Although Crazy Horse was never elected a chief among the Lakota, it is widely acknowledged that he is one of the most historically significant figures in the history of Native Americans. If you enjoyed this video, give a thumbs up, make a comment, and most importantly, subscribe to the channel. 
As always, thanks for watching.